This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Riley Smith. Good day and welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Today is Wednesday, December 6th, 2023. We're so glad you could join us for today's show. In today's episode, I continue some of that uh, coverage from the National Association of Farm Broadcasters Convention in Kansas City. Today, talking with Doug Bervin of Poet Biorefining, just catching up on the latest on what's going on with them as well as the future of renewable energy. We also have a check of that ag weather outlook, but first, let's run down the markets. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. At the end of another trading day in the ag marketplace, we're talking with Tyler Shaw of agmarket.net. Uh, first off, Tyler, what do we see going on in the grain markets today? Uh, kind of a reversal of yesterday. Yesterday uh, made the comment that one of the first days in a long time where my grain screen was entirely green and today it's mostly red. So either the markets are really getting in the Christmas spirit uh, or they just decided to take a little breather here. We've had a pretty nice little rally in, in wheat and corn anyhow for the last uh, week. Uh, beans have been under a little bit of pressure, but uh, just kind of a full-fledged sell-off here today. We know some of that strength came earlier from uh, export sales, obviously still a focus on the South American weather as well right now. But, you know, looking at just today, are we still riding off, off of that uh, export sales news or uh, what's been pushing that mostly? Yeah, you know, wheat uh, this morning reacted very strongly to that. In fact, at one point, your March Chicago wheat was up about 17 since uh, your, your Minneapolis wheat was up uh, probably about eight or nine, Kansas City was up strong, and then just throughout the day it kind of sold off. Uh, you know, the, the, it's kind of roulette with the weather in Brazil and, and Argentina right now. There's no doubt that uh, that crop is going to be smaller than maybe we were forecasting here two or three months ago. Uh, but you know, that there's the world balance sheet's got a lot of beans to absorb. So, uh, it's just trying to figure that out and you know we're not going to have those answers uh, tomorrow or or next week it's going to be a couple more months uh, before we have a better feel of what kind of crop they're growing but for the most part the the forecast there's been some disagreement between the two models uh, but for the most part it's leaning towards a uh, a change in the pattern and that just means more rain coming in and, and more rain, uh, you know, right now traders feel like it's better for that production possibility. So that seemed to weigh on markets. And like I said, you know, you had five, six straight days of solid gains in corn and wheat. Um, it's not going to last forever. Uh, I don't, I'm not to the point where I'm ready to cry wolf and say we've got chart damage in the wheat markets headed lower, but it's definitely something uh, we're going to keep an eye on and, we break a few more targets, we'll probably talk to some producers about going ahead and, and lowering our sales targets that we've got out there right now. And then we'll go ahead and jump into the livestock as well, because uh, as we know, it's been a you know a pretty interesting situation and a bit of an opposite one on that side, right? Yeah, just another uh, just another day where you've got a almost eight dollar range in feeders high to low, and and six dollar range in fat cattle high to low. Uh, actually, you know, feeders at one point, kind of mid-morning, were up a couple bucks and market felt pretty solid after yesterday's good gains. Uh, fat cattle kind of lagged the whole time, though, and uh, the, the some of the information we're getting or we're hearing is cash sales on fats are weaker than the low end last week. There hasn't been a lot of cash trade, but what little there has been has been on the weak side. I haven't got to look at it, but I did hear that uh, box beef cut out for beef uh, was lower again today and, and nearing lows that we haven't seen since April. Now, I'll remind everybody that it's still awfully high. It's just shy of $300. Um, so, you know, that that's a fairly stout cutout value compared to what we've seen in, in years past. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's enough. There's still a big, long position by managed money in that fat cattle uh, market that uh, probably spooked a few more out and, and it just kind of started to cascade lower on the cattle markets. Hogs were just kind of ho-hum today after, uh, you know, a, a 
decent drop yesterday. And then, uh, you know, obviously you're in a, in the spirit of the markets right now with the Vegas shirt today, but you know, there's a lot of things going on with, uh, you know, it could feel like you're throwing darts at a board. Like you said earlier, kind of spinning the roulette table, but then sometimes you get the markets looking. Now the board is a roulette table and you're throwing darts still at the same time. So looking for, you know, what farmers can do in this position and try to make sure that there's less of that chance involved, you know, what strategies do you have or advice that they could take right now to kind of minimize the risk and the volatility that's in the markets? You know, one of the things that uh, I've been pitching to some producers, like uh, take corn, for example, if you um, are behind the eight ball and haven't got a lot of corn marketed, you know, we're not exactly super um, uh, excited about making sales of corn here right today. We do think there's some some upside potential with that uh, weather issue going on in South America and just uh, kind of a seasonal pattern here. We've, we've we would wouldn't be surprised if we saw this market tick higher. If you want to put in some protection, you know, puts are are incredibly cheap right now. Uh, look at, uh, you know, this, uh, the February 24 at the money puts uh, settled the day at, at like below 15 cents. Uh, so, you know, you can, you can stick a floor on a February option is based off the March futures and that's going to last you till near the end of January. So, you know, the, the, the two, the, really, the three important time periods that I want to try to get through is is this South American weather over the next two to three weeks, uh, and then the new year usually brings in some some kinks to it, and then I really want some type of protection heading into that January WASDE report because that has the potential to be a big get, big game changer. Um, you know, I'm not going to go out and tell you what direction I think that's going to be because we haven't even seen the December WASDE report yet. But uh, buying that February option will get you past those three major time periods. Uh, same thing with some some soybean options. There's some decent puts that you can buy that that are kind of down around the recent lows that you can get uh, for 20 or less than 20 cents right about now. And you know, going forward, if you got the grain in the bin, at least uh, you're not super concerned about the thing falling out. Uh, we're still concerned about uh, much lower prices moving forward. So we encourage people to to look at some of those strategies and then reach out if you need some help. Uh, thanks for the advice as always uh, today, Tyler, and of course the great analysis as well. For those of our listeners and viewers who would like to get in touch and learn more from the folks at agmarket.net, how can they do that? Check us out on the internet, agmarket.net, and if they want to call me direct, the number is 701-987-6009. Great talking with you as always, Tyler. We look forward to uh, getting more uh, great analysis from you again soon. Thanks, Riley. That again was Tyler Shaw of agmarket.net. We'll go ahead and take a look at those closing market prices as seen on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network website. March corn down six and a quarter at 484 and a quarter. January soybeans down 10 even at 12.95 and a half. Soybean meal down 9.30 at 408.50. January soybean oil down 92 cents at 49.34. Chicago wheat up two and a quarter at 633 and a half. Kansas City hard red wheat down six and three quarters at 656 even. Minneapolis spring wheat down eight and a half at 730 and a half. March oats down 19 and three quarters at 372 even. On the Merck, December live cattle down 505 at 163.45. January feeders down 455 at 210.15. February lean hogs down a nickel at 69.30. February pork cutout went unchanged at 81.25. December class your milk up two cents at 1634. And that's been a check of the markets here on Ag Matters PM. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. When we come back, I talk with Doug Bourbon of Poet Biorefining. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Had the chance to catch up with Doug Bourbon of Poet Biorefining at the NAFB convention in Kansas City. Uh, we had a nice chat about just what's been going on with Poet recently, as well as the future and the potential of renewable energy, you know, especially as we've seen recent stories with uh, renewable aviation fuel. We are here at the National Association of Farm Broadcasters Convention in Kansas City, talking with Doug Bourbon of Poet. Uh, Doug, just tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on with Poet right now and uh, you know, what people should be keeping their eyes on. 
Sure. Well, there's a lot going on at Poet right now. Um, you know, we just we just formed a partnership with South Dakota State University and the South Dakota School of Mines on a uh, on an education platform at SDSU, where we're going to be offering uh, education degrees certification in bioprocessing. So, I think that's a good indication of how we see the future. We're trying to educate the young and get them the best education they can possibly get to get into the field of bioprocessing and agriculture. So that was a $5 million commitment um, over five years and we're very excited about that. We just opened a, a plant in Cloverdale, Indiana that'll, that'll buy about 34 million bushels of grain on an annual basis, employ 50 people. Um, that's a really good indication that we continue to grow and we see a lot of uh, hope in the future. Um, and then in Iowa, we, um, we just opened a biomass facility at our Emmitsburg facility where we're taking in corn stover from farmers. Uh, we're burning that stover, creating energy to run the ethanol plant. And so it adds another market for farmers uh, to sell their products and it lowers the CI score of the ethanol plant there which opens up new markets for us uh, for our ethanol and distillers brands. Right, and of course, you know, opens up the opportunity for them to advertise that low carbon uh, ethanol as well. And, you know, it's just one of those things where we're looking at all of these different uh, uses and, and, and everything for those byproducts of the grains that we're using. You know, you mentioned the corn byproducts being used just to burn, uh, to make energy for the ethanol plant. Um, and, you know, having that degree as well as South Dakota, you know, School, uh, school of Mines, and you say South Dakota State as well. Um, just tell us a little bit about that program. and. Exactly. I mean, are they focusing really on the bioenergy part of it or just biomass in general? It's bioenergy and it's really bioprocessing. So, you know, it'll cover a lot of different areas. But um, one of the things that is really promising about that is the potential of agriculture. People just don't understand the potential of agriculture. We continue to hear, can we really feed a growing population? And absolutely we can. Um, we can do a lot more than that. We can provide resources for an energy transition from fossil fuels to renewables, right? And we can all we can do this while reducing greenhouse gases. Um, agriculture has so much potential around the world. We need to change the conversation from uh, what is the problem with agriculture to what is the potential of agriculture. We have to understand that. And just to give you a little taste. In the United States, we produce about 175 to 180 bushels per acre of corn, national average. Around the world, that average is about 70 bushels per acre. So think of the potential of bringing the rest of the world up to U.S. agricultural standards. And we can do that. The problem is the rest of the world doesn't have enough markets for their ag products to provide a margin in agriculture, right? In the Midwest, we've seen a resurgence of agriculture over the last 20 years like we've never seen before. And that's because biofuels came up and soaked up surplus grain, supported the price of grain, created a margin in agriculture. Now we can take that blueprint and apply it all around the world. And so when we talk about the education platform and what we're doing in growth, all of this is leading to the fact that the potential of agriculture around the world is untapped and we're trying to tap into that. And we're especially looking at that in energy right now and you know we have the you mentioned that's like a lot of people that maybe not understanding the potential of agriculture and I frankly think we do see that in our uh, politicians and our you know Congress and the upper levels of legislation because sometimes it feels like they're not quite you know fully seeing what we're looking at here because we have an immediate and available solution right now yep. with biofuels to be able to cut down on those emissions and sometimes there's a little bit of focus on those EVs and we know that EVs aren't inherently bad but we know how are they making electricity a lot of burning coal right. so we're trying to find those ways to provide that solution right now and we've got it with ethanol biodiesel so just being able to put that out there and show off uh, exactly how much it helps we need that um, all of the above energy strategy. That's absolutely true. I, you know, I tell people that I think the EV is coming, but I think it's coming a lot slower than what people realize. And um, we're going to have internal combustion engines around as far as the eye can see. And as long as we have internal combustion engines, we're going to need clean fuels. 
Bioethanol is the cleanest, cheapest, most available fuel on the planet today. It's a superior fuel, and people need to hear that. You know, several years ago, um, we were cleverly defined with the phrase food versus fuel, and nothing could be further from the truth. Chevron just came out yesterday with a headline and said, it's not food versus fuel, it's food and fuel. Because we have surplus grain, we need to soak that up. They're getting it. The world is starting to understand that markets for grain leads to abundance of grain. And abundance of grain is wonderful because not only does it offer a cleaner, cheaper fuel, it spurs economic activity all around the world. And that's really what we need to do. Agriculture can get us back into rhythm with nature, where we've been taking coal and oil from the center of the earth and putting it in the atmosphere. We can take corn and biomass and these types of products and have a circular economy, get back into nature. So, you know, all of our efforts are focused on that type of aspect, reducing our carbon score, expanding our markets into all kinds of different things, whether it's going from E10 to E15 or getting into sustainable aviation fuel or export markets. Boy, the future is so bright and we just need to make sure that people have the right messaging. Yeah, the opportunities are virtually unlimited when it comes to all the uses for byproducts that we have out there. Now, thinking specifically about that Emmitsburg uh, processing facility, tell us a little bit more about that and uh, just what exactly uh, the benefits it will be to provide for POET. Sure. Well, we built a cellulosic facility in Emmitsburg alongside the, the bioethanol plant several years ago. That cellulosic facility stalled for a number of reasons we don't need to get into. but. In our effort to reduce our carbon score, we saw an opportunity there um, to reignite the solid fuel boiler, um, providing a market for biomass for the farmers. I think they will appreciate that along with their grain. Um, and from an ethanol standpoint, by burning biomass, you reduce your natural gas usage, which helps your carbon score. And as we drop our carbon score down, markets open up for us. Sustainable aviation fuel is a really good example of that. Um, the aviation fuel is a huge, huge market. Today we produce about 16 billion gallons of bioethanol in this country, and the market for sustainable aviation fuel dwarfs that. So not only can we expand, we can just flourish again with more growth uh, in bioethanol as we reduce our carbon score. So it really checks a lot of different boxes. And then you mentioned something earlier too about product diversification. We often say we can make anything out of a bushel of corn that they can make out of a barrel of oil. It's just a matter of biotechnology and economics. And so whether it's corn oil for renewable diesel, whether it's distillers grains, whether it's bioplastics, bioplastics and biochemicals, that's where we're going. And it just expands our market, expands our, our product portfolio. That, that's really exciting. And that's why we need the education platforms that we're putting together. Doug, lots of great information today. Is there anything else going on at POET that our listeners and viewers should know about today? Well, I think you need to know that we see the future as more promising today than we ever have. Um, agriculture, believe it or not, is an emerging industry. We're just learning how to farm. We're just learning what to do with agriculture. And so we are so, I don't know, just forward looking with the potential of agriculture. I, farmers need to understand that. Um, the future looks bright for them. We're going to grow our markets. They're going to grow their markets. We'll work together to uh, meet the potential of agriculture. That again was Doug Bourbon of Poet Biorefining. Let's go ahead and take a look at that ag weather outlook. Aside from the temperatures, a pretty unremarkable forecast for the next couple of days. We're looking at sunny skies to partly cloudy skies, a bit of breezy conditions, but otherwise, like I said, those temperatures climbing a bit higher and unseasonably warm for this time of year. So let's see what the National Weather Service has in store for the next 24 hours. As you can see from the National Weather Service, today we have variably sunny and breezy conditions with highs ranging from about 40 to the mid-50s. Tonight, mostly clear skies and really pretty pleasant conditions 
with those lows overnight ranging from the upper 20s to mid 30s. And tomorrow, sunny skies and warmer, almost unseasonably warm temperatures with those highs ranging from the low 50s to low 60s. And taking a look at the affiliate weather map for tomorrow, Cherokee will be sunny with a high of 58, Shenandoah sunny in 62, Des Moines sunny in 61, Waterloo sunny in 57, Albia sunny and breezy with a high of 59, and Clinton will also see sunny skies with a high around 52. For a more detailed forecast in your part of the state, make sure to check in with your local Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network affiliate. A list of those affiliates can be found at iowaagnet.com. Of course, you can find our five daily ag news stories there as well. Don't forget as well to try to find us on social media, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and TikTok. We have our video content as well on our YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see when those videos go live. And of course, as always, we have our free twice daily market podcast on Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. From the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network studios in Des Moines, I'm Riley Smith. On behalf of Mark Magnuson, Dustin Huffman, and Andy Peterson, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.